are you wearing space pants because your ass is out of this world? <laughs> space pants. I know, right? <laughs> Go try that on someone, see if you get slapped. Oh, Brittany, Tiffany, Candace, I'm gonna rattle this shit off, okay? And when I hit it, you buzz it, okay. all right? Uh, Brittany, Tiffany, Amber, Sabrina, Melody, Dakota, Sierra, Bambi, Crystal, Samantha, Ruby, Tara, Tom, Timmy, Lauren, Shelly, Chantel, Christy, Mitney. I can't do it all. It's 52 My, random hey, names. That's unheard of. Though, but that you that's impressive. Name. What I can tell you, this is how this works, okay? I got a scanned copy of that fucking Outback contract in my, in my outbox, all right? Now I press one button, a hundred different dudes, and I read your name alongside Sam Lancaster in black and white, okay? I give you the whole. I give you the whole. Uh, thing. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've never seen it I remember it all my lines from Boogie Nights. <clears throat> Let's hear some other movies. Right. Keep it going. All right. Who's it gonna be, huh? Who's gonna fuck, huh? Look, it's my big dick. I'm ready to fuck. So everybody, get ready now. <laughs> <laughs> Best line of all time. <laughs> and then you know. Um, don't give me, the, you know, messing it up. But, you know, the, the important thing is get that slide in there. And then, you know, all right. So ready to call. Put the slides in. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. All right. All right. Oh, oh. that lens. Oh! <laughs> you okay, man? Right in the eye. <laughs> I think All right. Banana. I'm gonna stop with that. <laughs> well, I think we got robbed of a back in alien youth because of AIDS. I know that's not over yet, but it's certainly. What did we do? It was like uh, the year we became 16, so we couldn't really have sex like our parents did in the 60s. So, although there still isn't a cure for AIDS, I don't know. I love that this. I, is, I just wanted to say, for the record, that this this film is a comedy of kind of <laughs> and I know we've so far covered heroin and AIDS, and I'm sorry. I'd it. also like to say that uh, Mia Sara from First Peter's Day Off, uh, it goes to the same gym as me in in LA, and I saw her and I was like, oh my god, she hasn't aged at all, and I was like, oh my god, it's Mia Sara from First Peter's Day Off. You over the fucking internet. Yeah. No, Mia Sara. She sees that and thinks, oh, oh he's a nice young man. <laughs> Hello. Well, <laughs> I'm going to make a reference that's going to reveal my age <laughs> and the things that I like to do. Go for it. I feel like I'm Hannah Montana. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it just it feels very, I don't know, it feels like I'm living two different worlds. Especially when I was in school too. Like I would go off and like one weekend I, I flew to LA with my mom and my best friend and we went to the MTV Movie Awards and then on Monday I had a math test. It just feels really, there's like a disconnect between my lives but um it's been working so far what's a rap song that you know the words to <laughs> um 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 well i i, I kind of know uh, uh no love by uh you know uh, um eminem and uh little wayne can you remind me how that goes uh oh boy was it uh oh man oh god you put me on the spot um what is it oh shit it's um, oh it's not gonna work you, I know, I know. It says, "Bitch, you know, you get no love," <laughs> so, which, which is perfectly in keeping with my trying to empower ladies. <laughs> it seems like a lot of people right now are, as if this is the first time that young women have ever, you know, incorporated sexuality into music. You know, or, that seems or men for the Christ's sake. I mean, like I could see Robert Plant's dick. I don't know if anyone was <laughs> aware of that, but like I don't know why everyone just focuses on women. Would you be up for doing an improv game here if I gave you characters? Sure. Always. One of, one of you is a uh, mascot for a fast food chain and the other is a hungry teenager. Okay, one of us is a mascot for a fast food chain. 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 <laughs> that can be you. Okay. And I'm a hungry teenager. Mm -hmm. And what's a word? That's all we get. We're just, we're just... And you're both outside the fast food chain five minutes before it closes. Okay. Hey, I was hoping to get um hey, hey. a cheeseburger. I don't have them in my soup, guy. You gotta go inside. I'm just outside of here, trying to get people into the business. All right. But it feels like, you know, you could maybe talk to the manager just okay, because. Look, guy, all right. <gasps> what? You You're actually a person. Yeah, I'm a real guy in here. You thought I? You I thought always thought you were. I thought you were rally the. The Rally Burger. No, I'm not Rally the Rally Burger. I'm, I'm Bob Parsons. 
I, this is my second job. I've got three kids who don't speak to me, so that's the truth, all right? And now the restaurant is on fire. Hmm? Oh, good, it's burning down. Rally! I'll go find a better job. And scene. <laughs> that's actually a good scene. It was. <laughs> we nailed it. That was it. awesome, I like that. We well, what's that. What was it like having, I feel like having a cat actually attached to you by a wire yeah. must be such a, that's an experience not a lot of people get to have. <clears throat> and really they shouldn't. It's not, it's not, I don't recommend it. No, why not? No. Because a cat generally doesn't want to be attached to you by a wire, uh, so it'll try to become unattached <laughs> by whatever means necessary. Is there an animal you think would go for that better? Like a dead one, maybe. Lance doesn't want to see this movie. Have your other subjects wanted to? Spitzer wanted to see it immediately. Um, <laughs> Julian wanted to denounce it before he saw it. <laughs> <laughs> And, and did so. Uh, he, he got an audio tape recording and, and, and issued a, an annotated transcript of the film, which, because it was an audio tape recording, um, missed you know, fully a third of the movie, which were the silent chats by Bradley Manning. Your questions are very intriguing, my friend. Is that a good thing? No, <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. It is what it is. You're, you like being... Um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, causing a thing, like a thing. Did you hear about the recent story about the three-way that ended in a stabbing? Doesn't surprise me. What? If I'm honest. Oh, go on. And it wasn't because of an alien possession. No. The two guys wanted to, one wanted to change positions and the other one was against it. That's why they, <laughs> that's why they stabbed him. I know. <laughs> it's well, ridiculous. What did he stab him with? <laughs> See, I just want to let that settle. We've talked a lot about Danny being so different from this character. I think even Mel Gibson called him a pussycat. In, <laughs> in your experience, how much does that seem to be the case that on-screen badasses are, can be the opposite in real life? Always. I worked with a guy so named Bill Sadler who um, played like one of the bad guys in Die Hard 2. And, and he, he made a movie with a bunch of other bad guys. So they all became friends. And I went over to his house once. All the bad guys were in his living room that you recognize from all these other movies, and they're all playing banjos and guitars and crooning uh, Johnny Cash. It was the funniest <laughs> thing to see, like the bad guy gang, and they're all super sweet. Do you recall who else was there? Um, I can name the movies. One of them was the bad guy in a Chuck Norris movie. I should know his name. It just uh, it's like a who's who of, of a bad guy, <laughs> um, and it was just amazing to see all those faces in that circumstance. And they're the sweetest people in the world. And they all hang out together. Like they, <laughs> that's the only other friends they could find are other bad guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. So sad. And Danny's like that. He's just a really sweet guy. And if Martin Scorsese says he likes them, I think and any, if, ma any man can feel yeah, fine. And like if, Martin, if Marty says, I like it. I like it. I like your stuff. You know, then it's, uh, then, you know what, then maybe we should all give it a, give it a, give it a shot when I the like next one comes out. It's good. I've been working on it. I like you, it. If I were De Niro, could you give me how you would direct me? You, you, mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta work a little harder on your, on your lines. You gotta, you gotta, you're, you're, you're not so bad. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta think a little harder. You gotta do a little more. Like, you gotta, you're gonna punch in the face once you gotta punch it back. You gotta punch in, you gotta punch him in the head. <laughs> that was good. I can yeah. see you spend some time on that. It's my, it's my, um, it's my Scorsese impression. I like it. Do you know I did a movie with a monkey that played hockey? No, now I do. Grade A. What's it called? Most Valuable Primate. Okay, I'm gonna watch it. You should. What, what, what team did the monkey play for? Mine. Your team, obviously. He was my monkeys. Was Chimpanzee, we're not supposed to call them monkeys. Oh really, they get offended? Well, the, the animal people do, because they're not monkeys. The animal do. people. I am well, happy, I'm happy to drink Muller with you. The it time is 10.45 a.m. <laughs> Yeah, the best like, time to I'm drink Malort, obviously. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that. We're supposed to pretend that you know it's like late in the day, and uh, you're, you're you're letting the audience behind the curtain. Quitting right time already. <laughs> <laughs> it is 10:45 in the morning. Uh, we're already drinking beer. I'm super excited to do a baby shot of Malort. Apparently, yes. they were all out of Malort. I know the end of the bottle. It must really us. Oh, it's the so, last. Uh, so well, the last bits of Malort. So we're gonna see how our Malort I haven't faces. had I haven't had Malort in probably two years. So I am, but though it is prominently featured in Drinking Buddies in one scene in particular. So here we go. Cheers. Cheers. You mentioned wanting to model your career in some way after Ryan Gosling. How how much do you wish you could go back and be part of the Mickey Mouse Club if you oh, could? Oh man, I can't sing for work the lick, so I don't know if I would be allowed in the club. Like that would be, I can't. You I can't, can't sing? sing? No, no. Can you dance? I mean, I, got, I mean, I was born rhythm, but I mean, I don't know if I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a 
a break dance. Uh, I feel like there's always that one member who's in the back just kind of mouthing a lot. Nah, no, <laughs> yeah, he just kind of got by because he was a cute kid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, I don't even I don't know how that Mickey, Mickey Mouse Club wasn't for you. Yeah. You got to know how to pony, like Bonnie Marone, mashed potato, do the alligator. I think I answered a lot of questions about the, the women thing. And it used to bug me for a while, but I think maybe it's just the case that like every year I've had something a little different to say about it. Even Even just because at first it didn't really affect my career at all. And then when you start taking photos for magazines, you know, the way that... It's a little different the way that Sims is treated, the way that I'm treated, for good right. reason or for bad, I don't know. And then once you start dealing with LA guys, then all this the sliminess that I thought was just not part of the music industry as prominently as it was displayed in you know biopics about Cadillac Records back in the day or whatever, it's like, mom, it's not that slimy. And then you meet like LA and New York guys, and it gets like it's so insidious because they'll greet you, you know, and they'll touch you or something. But they don't say like, you know, it's a casting couch, like I want to sign you, but first I have to see the goods. I don't say anything like that. But they just, their hands linger too long and it's so like insidious that I don't know when to yell, you're touching me too long. And he's like, whoa. Because it's so casual, the way that the lines mm. become crossed. And that stunned me. I thought it, I was ready when I joined this business to be like, no, no. And then I found that like, I don't know, sexism and misogyny and complicated gender roles came with a lot of otherwise really good people. I think anything with that in that sleazy tone of voice would be uncomfortable. Even if they said, I think your music is phenomenal, yeah, that would just be wrong. My wife loves your stuff. <laughs> it's never a good voice. Actually, I strangely wouldn't mind a week with Justin Bieber because I have, like, things to say to him. Like what? I feel like he's been really mistreated. <laughs> and it makes me really sad. Look at my filmography for a second. I played a white woman. I played a midget. I played a crackhead. I played a gangster. I played an a Shakespearean educated uh, uh, teacher. I played a power tap instructor. Who has a filmography like that? That's crazy. A white woman and a midget. Sorry, Sir Lawrence and Olivier never played a midget. Never played a white woman, man. Who's my Oscar? But I'm wondering when you when you make those, is there any sense of for me as a viewer with those movies, I couldn't help but say no one would believe that he was a baby and those don't look like white women. Like is that You should never ever go see a comedy. Ever. You should only see dramas. You gotta go see yeah, just dramas. Cause you can't think like that in a movie. When you go see a movie you gotta suspend come on. Are, you, you think all go, you think when you all go see Jurassic players, Park? Do you go? I love Jurassic Park. Oh my Park. God! Look at those real dinosaurs. Like, of course that not, can, because they that make can it, really they exist. make it believable on screen. It's you can't believe you can't suspend the the believability. You can't suspend the reality and go. You know what? I could believe that as a baby. I could. I could believe in that Sean case. White I, it didn't seem believable to me. So you can I think do it, with so much makeup. That's tough. I had the tough back. All I needed, you know what, here's the thing. If I had a vagina, you would have believed it. You're right. That would have sold it. But I'm glad we didn't have to take it there. Yeah, but you know what, I could have. I could have. That was, you consider that for white chicks? That's method acting. You gotta do it. I consider that, I consider A white vagina or a black vagina? Nah, I have to start with a black vagina and then go to a white vagina. And then you'd be seven more hours of makeup. But the surgery to go to a white vagina, you know how painful that is? I One don't. thing at a time. Because the skin grafting involved. Just doing a vagina alone is a lot of work. But to add, like, the white and the pink and get that perfect, that's like a couple of surgeries. So I would go black vagina first. And then I would do, for the sequel, I would do a white vagina. Now I do wish there was a sequel. Now we're going to do one. All of a sudden. But can you suspend the fact that, oh, they're, they're guys, they're black guys? The second time, yes, I will. Okay. So that was hard for you. Now to that I know what you, can, what you put into it, I appreciate it. <laughs> cool. I think that's all the time we have. Appreciate it, Marlon. Thanks a lot. Got it.